Hey guys, Ben's Ben here from Screenhawk UK and I am going to give you a brief rundown, brief review on The Walking Dead 400 Days, which is the latest DLC episode for Telltale Games' The Walking Dead Point and Click series. Now, for anyone who's caught, well, keeps up with our reviews, you'll know that The Walking Dead last year was a big hit with us at Screenhawk UK. We really liked that game, it took us all by surprise, um, none of us were great point and click lovers but we, we played through that and we absolutely loved it it had us all gripped um so yeah you know go out and check the uh, the full review for that i'll put a link at the bottom of this uh, this video um or, the, or this recording uh so with the four with 400 days uh it isn't actually carrying on the story of lee everett and clementine and those of you who've played through the well it's right to the end of season one probably could guess why um instead this this is a dlc episode that sidesteps into an entirely new cast of characters and it's it's, it's very different in the fact that whereas The Walking Dead was very linear in that you played one character and you played it you know, through from beginning to end, this is um, essentially uh, five stories that you can play in any order. It's It's got a bit of a Tarantino, uh, Tarantino feel to it in that respect. Um, so the kind of the, the, the theme, as it were, for this particular DLC is that it all centers around a gas station. And uh, there, at the gas station, there is this notice board full of uh, pictures of survivors, and there's a the picture of the the five survivors, and you basically choose which one you want to look at, and then you play through their story. And now there's a there's a great mix of uh, mix of characters. You've got um, you've got a former heroin addict who is uh, who's been taken in by a couple, and and the kind of dynamic of them. You've got um, a kind of stoner and his best friend on the on the run. You've got a um, a young a young guy called Russell who is um, he's trying to make his way to find his grandmother who he believes is still alive and he's a bit of a loner. He he, uh, he says things along the lines of that he was with a group but he didn't like the way it was going. Um, and to that effect, you've also played as a young woman called Shell who is uh, basically responsible for her younger sister um, who's who's in her teens and it's a bit of a Clementine Lee relationship. Except that Shell's a lot younger than uh, than Lee was, and her sister, whose name escapes me at the moment, uh, she's a lot older than Clementine ever was. And it's it's a, and plus it's not a father daughter relationship. Obviously, it's a it's a sister relationship, and it's it's a bit of a different dynamic. And it's about how they how how they live in this in this group that's slowly starting to get darker and darker as things progress, and then what they have to do to survive. Um, you've got uh, you know you've got a few other characters as well in there. You have. Um, you play as a, a convict who, when you open in a story, he uh, he kills somebody, and you've got you know you're on the run, and it shows you he's a, he's in a prison transport bus when the outbreak of the, the, the dead start walking, and you've got to escape from captivity with him. And there's a lot of very interesting scenarios in this game, and that's what I really liked about it because the stories are all quite short and very varied. They um, they introduce you a lot of different situations, and much like the uh, the bulk of season one, what the, 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 the kind of the crux and the, the highlight of this particular game was that it forces you into uncomfortable situations that require harsh decisions, and it doesn't give you a lot of a lot of time to make them decisions, and they can have fairly big consequences, and it, it's it's hard to see maybe where the consequences are going. Um, it was very hard in the first game. In here, it's almost impossible because of the short length and the fact that it's left very open, which kind of brings me to what I didn't really like about this. Um, it, it's technically DLC, but really, The Walking Dead was all DLC. It was, you know, you know it was episodical. It, it came in five parts, and as far as I can tell, really, this this should be no different than a sixth part. Maybe it's a little cheaper than the other parts. I'm not sure because I bought the, the complete package when it was all out. But uh, I got this on iPad, which came to about three pound. However, I think it can go up to as much as five pound depending on on platform. Um, but one of the things I didn't like about this is I'm all for introducing a new cast of characters, but my my understanding is that this is essentially a prologue to what season two, uh, you know, a lot of the characters who appear in season two uh, will be. But as the things stand now, we know absolutely nothing about season two, and we don't really know how this DLC will feed into season two. And the way this ends with certain characters split, like with the certain characters will will turn off and go their own way and other characters will go another way. I'm really struggling to see how this will have a meaningful impact on season two. It'll be interesting to see in the long run, but 
I really think I can. I mean, really coming down to it, I think I can wholeheartedly recommend this DLC for people who loved, absolutely loved the the season one, the, the base game, the season one, the uh, loved it from start to finish, and just wanted more Walking Dead. For for the rest of us, well, for the, I mean, I, I probably do fall in that category of being somebody who did love the first one, so I did buy this, no questions asked really, but really for, for people who are maybe not jumping the gun and just wanting to get this regardless, I'd maybe say hold off a little bit, hold off a little bit until we know a little bit more about season two, and we know how necessary this actually is, because while it does introduce us to the characters, none of them are like amazing characters, they're all good and they're all well rounded, but none of them are going to make you want to just play for their, their the particular story, that you don't spend enough time with them to really develop that kind of relationship with them. And if they're just going to be background characters in season two and you can kind of say, oh, well, I know I know where that guy's from or where, where she's from or what she's been through, that that's fair enough. But I, I, I don't know, I, I think at the moment it's probably worth waiting till we know a little bit more about season two and how this feeds into it. And one thing that did have me puzzled is actually when you start the game, it'll ask if you want to import your data from season one. And I can't see any way your season one decisions will have any impact on 400 days. But the only thing I can really think of it is that it will sit in the background of your 400 days save and 400 days will then plug into directly into season two and it'll essentially combine your season one and your 400 days data into season two, which may, you know, it obviously personalizes the story. But as I say, because this is a bridge from season one to season two and we know nothing about season two and it's completely separate from season one, it feels very isolated and in that respect it doesn't carry a lot of impact, certainly not the impact that the, the, the season one yeah, episodes did. So yeah, my, really, I kind of maybe repeat myself a little bit here, but ultimately if you loved The Walking Dead, absolutely loved it and just want more, this is more of the same. It's this very dialogue, very decision heavy point and click game that's a light on puzzle solving but has a few kind of action orientated uh, situations that you know to break up the monotony and you know it's great it's great as far as that goes but it it because of its isol isolated storyline in the current landscape if you're not totally in love with the walking dead then maybe hold off until we do know a bit more about season two Regardless, this isn't bad, and for three to five pounds, you're probably going to find enough to like about this. One thing I don't know if I've mentioned already, I might be repeating myself again, but you could play through this a few times. Um, the situations, because they're only short stories, they seem to have been able to play with them a bit more, and depending on your decisions, I can imagine you could have vastly different um, experiences, maybe diverging a bit more than season one ever really let you do. So as far as a rating goes, um, it's a bit of a difficult one because we awarded the season one of The Walking Dead a gold star, you know, our highest accolade. We absolutely loved it. It was one of our favourite games of 2012. Whereas this doesn't carry the same impact, uh, feels a bit disjointed, and doesn't really bring anything new to the table in terms of gameplay, although the, the core that we love so much is still here. Uh, so with that respect, I think I would have to give this episode, uh, this DLC episode of 400 Days, a B plus. Um, it's not too expensive, so I think if you're interested, you'll find a lot to like here. But I think its value may increase or decrease depending on how much it will feed into or affect season two. Um, so really, you know, I can recommend buying this with a caveat. Uh, so yeah, I think a B plus is a fair rating for this particular product. For the full written review for 400 Days and a host of other reviews and podcasts, please head over to screenhog.co.uk and check them out.